in your team going to give us an update on the status of Jackson? Uh, and Stephen, if you could um, load uh, full 9E. Morning, Acting Chair Chase, members of the board. Uh, thanks for having us today. Uh, Kevin Conway, Cal Fire Administration State Forest Program Manager, and Luke Kendall, the Mendocino Unit Chief. And uh, we're here today to give you an update on the Jackson Demonstration uh, State Forest Management Plan review. Um, you know, to to get there, I think we want to just start by recognizing, you know, we started this process, uh, you know, last May, so we're going almost a year in. Uh, to some, it may look like we're not making much progress, but I think that we're here to report on, uh, you know, how we're setting the stage for a successful review of that uh, plan. So we're going to start from the beginning on how we arrived at an early review of the plan outside of our normally, uh, you know, tenure cycle that we bring these to the board, uh, the progress that we've made to date, and the strategy and timeline for uh, developing the plan with our tribal and broad stakeholder engagement. Uh, so let's we'll see. Move on here. I guess if we can uh, scroll up on that since it yeah. doesn't look like it's a Yeah, Stephen, if you could put it in presentation mode. It might take a moment. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. We'll keep uh, keep rolling. But well, you know, why are we here at a, at an early review? Um, you know, so so first because we all think that uh, J JDSF is a is a special place. We want to see it well managed, and we want to see it provide the div diverse suite of of benefits to Californians. Um, you know, the goal of of JDSF and all of our state forests is to provide a resilient forest landscape and not to maximize any single benefit. Um, if the uh, <laughs> presentation comes back, but um, you know, we we threw up, uh, you know, so there are some things that have changed since uh, 2016 when we were back here, um, which was the last time that the that the management plan was in front of the board, and the 2016 plan, you know, we'll recognize was uh, much uh, the same as the 2008-2011 document that the board adopted after some pre pretty significant um, uh, community input. Uh, the biggest changes to that 2016 plan were the added research and recreation component uh, as, uh, and you know, I think what we, we recognize is that there's been some changing needs of society since, uh, you know, we, we came back and, you know, those have been well documented in, uh, in places that the board is familiar with. So, um, you know, we've got uh, uh, some of the executive orders around how we engage with our with our local tribes, how we provide access to uh, our landscape as as ancestral uh, lands of our of our local tribes. Uh, we've got our natural working and lands climate smart strategies. So the state's given some direction on on where do we want to go with our with our forest lands. What are some of the benefits that we are going to provide there as far as climate change mitigation? Uh, we've got our pathways to 3030. So, how are we providing for biodiversity within these landscapes, and you know, especially for us within managed landscapes? Uh, and we've got the Wildfire and Forest Resilience Task Force, you know, which is the state's efforts working with uh, you know federal agencies and you know broadly across California. How are we going to going to provide those those benefits? So, um, you know, so I think the attempt here is going to be to incorporate all of that feedback uh, into into our plan moving forward. Yeah, let's see. Are you able to go to the next? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're. we're, we're <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, good. I know I'm standing between you guys and lunch, so. <laughs> yeah, this is the really important issue, though. We appreciate you being here. So, yep, you got it. Oh, great. Yeah. So, so we're still setting the stage here, but. Um, you know, here's here's some of the documents. You know, here's uh, some of the reasons why we're coming for an early review. And here we've got uh, Lynn Webb, our our ex uh, research uh, program director at uh, JDSF, hugging our tallest uh, redwood tree, which stands at 340 feet tall at Jackson. Um, and so again, the uh, uh, the department and the Natural Resource Agency asked for an early review of the plan back in May of 2022, and uh, and then we came back 
to the Jackson Advisory Group in August of 2022, and we presented uh, what we're calling the uh, the new vision. Okay, and why is a new vision? The new vision really stems from uh, a lot of community input, right? From community engagement that happened out on the, the JDSF over the last couple of years. Uh, also the uh, governor's executive orders that have been in play and that have been put in place and uh, the government to government uh, engagement uh, for tribal engagement has also been a, a major factor in that. And then really just the, uh, another component is the folks that are using the forest on a daily basis uh, with the changing um, in you know, carbon sequestration, um, uh, the cutting edge research and different things that we're seeing out on the JDSF. So now, we can all right. So, what is this uh, this new vision? Uh, and so, um, you know, the bullet points here are all of the uh, the 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 main points that we've laid out that the state has asked us to address here. Um, what you're looking at is a picture of the Department of Fish and Wildlife putting some uh, uh, radio tags into juvenile coho salmon so they can track them coming in and out of uh, one of the water courses at Jackson. Um, and, and we're going to go through each of these uh, in a little bit of detail so you can see, you know, what these what these look like and, uh, um, you know, what our interpretation of this is now that will be, you know, open to public review and input as we move through the process. Uh, but I just want to uh, point out that it's very important that this new vision is complementary to the existing forest management plan. And we are working with the Jackson Advisory Group now to do some focused review on existing projects and future projects on how do we meet the intent of this new vision within those plans. Um, and that these activities can be immediately implemented. You know, there is no uh, barrier in the current forest management plan for us to start uh, addressing these issues. And, you know, in fact, we already are addressing many of them. Uh, but, you know, I think we're being told we can improve and we see that uh, we, there's many ways that we can. Uh, so forest restoration, you know, this is a, uh, a, a big, a big topic. Um, you know, how do we, how do we go from the condition our forests are in and how do we get them into that condition that we'd like them to be? And, you know, we are very impatient as a society. So how do we do that in an accelerated uh, manner. So, you know, what you're looking at here is uh, post harvest of our red tail timber harvesting plan. So just uh, harvested last year, the orange banded tree is a uh, potential elder tree. Uh, and we'll get a little farther into the conversation uh, of, of what that is, but it's, you know, a tree that's uh, providing a high level of carbon sequestration on the landscape that we've committed to permanently retain uh, for those purposes. Uh, we've just finished putting 185 pieces of large woody debris in Hare Creek with uh, the partnership of Trout Unlimited. And, and ironically, this is one of the areas that was first denuded of large woody debris in the 60s, consistent with the best science at the time. So, you know, we're, we're turning it around and we're, you know, reaccelerating that, that restoration. Uh, we're doing uh, a lot of barred owl management, recognizing that we've, for the last 20 years, really focused on providing high quality habitat for the northern spotted owl. Uh, but they're not using it because they're being crowded out. Uh, we're uh, uh, funding a number of, of road abandonment projects of, of high priority uh, road projects, including one that accesses an adjacent state park. Uh, and uh, Chief Kendall and his team have been doing a, a great job of, of putting uh, prescribed fire back on the landscape, either post harvest or in areas that uh, uh, that we haven't harvested. Uh, and alongside of that, we are working on the fuel break network to allow for those prescribed fires to get bigger and safer. Okay. Um, another part of the, the new vision is uh, the addition to um, some more members on the JAG. And uh, Reno Franklin uh, was appointed by the board and has been. Um, a good uh, sounding board for the group, and uh, much appreciated to have him on the um, on the uh, JAG. And then uh, Joanna Nelson, Joanna Nelson also 
is the science and planning and safety the Redwood League's um, director. So that's also been a very good um, addition to the board and um, to, to really help us work through um, good communication during the JAG meetings. Um, and another thing with that is we really appreciate locally and the community appreciates locally the engagement uh, that the, this board has had at uh, the JAG meetings and uh, the participation that we've seen from the board uh, on our um, outreaches that we've done over the last year. So thank you very much for that. <clears throat> okay, another thing that we worked on uh, over the last year is uh, really working towards that tribal engagement. Uh, probably in the last um, five months, we've done more with uh, prescribed fire than we've seen in the past on the JDSF. And uh, that is um, really gonna push us in the right direction. Um, we work on uh, with our tribal partners on TANF improvement areas. And that's what you're seeing uh, with this here is uh, to try to remove some of the weevil infestation uh, that is in the TAN or, uh, or in this stand here where when those uh, acorns fall, uh, the weevils will infest and so if we burn through there and get it healthy then when the stand uh, does drop uh, acorns then it's uh, easy for people to go in and, and harvest and uh, keep the weevils down so that's one of the things that you can see here. Uh, we've also worked with our tribal partners to um, name some of our local trails and see if I can get this right. Castile Kalida is the uh, trail name that was uh, was adopted by uh, the JDSF for one of the uh, trails um, in the Castro in the Castro 500 area. Um, we've also worked uh, really hard to have some outreaches with our tribal partners, and we've shared some maps of uh, our uh, known cultural sites, and that will help with. Uh, their engagement with early engagement in future projects to assure that um, we are meeting their needs uh, when it comes to um, gathering or cultural sites or anything else. To the uh, Tribal Council. Oh, and then uh, we are also working on, uh, that's what we've been working on the last month, is um, building a Tribal Advisory Council. Uh, that we sent letters out. Uh, I went and spoke at um, a couple of the, um, or to a couple of the tribal members and to the tribal chairs. Um, and I'm trying to find more time uh, on their time uh, to uh, get out to their councils and give presentations on what this council is uh, designed to do. And really what we're trying to build is a avenue for their voices to be heard uh, in a form where um, they don't have to go through the JAG to do that. They can actually uh, bring that information to us and uh, will help us line out new and improved projects. And uh, there should be money coming available for projects that they would like to see on the JDSF. So we're in the early stages of getting that off the ground, um, which will also help with the rewrite of the management plan that that's going to be a component of that. All right, so alongside the, the new vision, the, the state has also given us some uh, one time and some permanent uh, additional resources to work with to carry these out uh, with a, a real emphasis on increasing the amount of, of science and research coming off the forest uh, and how we provide recreation. So. Uh, we had a uh, one-time funding of, of $10 million uh, last year, and we've, we've committed uh, most, of, most of that. This fiscal year, we've got another additional $5 million of funding, uh, and then we've gotten proposed in this uh, new budget another $5 million of funding. So, you know, really encouraging us to, uh, uh, to do more and to also um, a little bit allow us to, to slow down and make sure that we you know, deliberately uh, address how we're, we're moving forward. So recognizing that, you know, we're, we're a self-funded program, 
uh, the operations at JDSF are very important to uh, uh, to funding the program and to also funding a lot of the improvements that are happening on the forest. So, you know, this gives us that bridge to make sure that we we don't lose momentum on on some of those restoration projects that we're working on. Uh, we got some additional uh, permanent positions, uh, a mix of, of forestry and environmental scientist positions and some administrative staff. Uh, so, you know, again, really, really helping us a little bit diversify the expertise we have out there on the forest and, uh, you know, increasing the, the total amount of, of workforce we have to address these concerns. Uh, the, the Natural Resource Agency also through uh, uh, funding to the, the, the Fire Resource Assessment Program of CAL FIRE is uh, working with Lawrence Berkeley Lab to fund a climate observation tower for Redwood Forest. So this will, uh, you know, fill a key need in how Redwood Forests are contributing to, uh, you know, one of the climate change solutions. And it's going to uh, fill in some data that the Air Resources Board to, uh, needs to really address that, that part of California's forests. Uh, so some of the immediate actions that we've that we've taken uh, with existing projects are are listed here. So we had sales that were that were out. You know, we took this this challenge of the the new vision. How can we incorporate it into existing projects? And we worked with our contractors to remove the trees that were over 48 inches diameter from harvest. Uh, do additional post harvest slash treatment uh, after the uh, the operations. Uh, expand some of the cultural resource protections and to uh, implement this uh, uh, permanent protection of these potential elder trees. Uh, and so we're working with Dr. Steve Sillett of, of Cal Poly Humboldt. Uh, this is an idea that he has, um, you know, how can we promote, promote non-timber values within managed redwood forests and how can we, uh, you know, very quickly allow some of these redwoods to gain their, their stature and durable biomass uh, out there on the forest. And, and how can we identify these trees in advance? So, you know, this is what we're doing as part of uh, these harvests. We've gone back through, we've identified the trees that, uh, you know, in the past, we've primarily retained trees for wildlife value. Now we're specifically looking at trees and what are the best characteristics of those trees that are providing high levels of carbon sequestration and may even in fact be providing a, a bulk of the carbon sequestration across those acres that we're treating. So we don't lose that as part of our, our forest management treatments. Um, we've uh, uh, you know, been challenged even before this to increase our community engagement, make sure that people know uh, what we are doing there at, uh, at Jackson. So we've increased the number of meetings of our, of our Jackson advisory group from uh, two a year to four a year. Uh, hopefully you are all uh, receiving the, the monthly newsletter that we're putting out there on at uh, JDSF. Uh, we have a contract with UC Cooperative Extension that's been instrumental in helping us provide additional uh, tours. Uh, and so, you know, I, I highlight just a couple there. We invited the community out to the Casper Watershed 60th anniversary. Uh, we've hosted the local uh, Climate Advisory Committee members. Uh, we had the forest landowners on, on the forest. Uh, we recently conducted a tour of uh, looking at how bats use redwood trees as, as habitat. Uh, we've got an upcoming uh, a tour on the Noyo uh, for salmon. And I understand that uh, that member Blake is working with UC Cooperative Extension on potentially coming out to talk about uh, affiliated woodpecker use of managed redwood forest. Um, so we're, we're looking forward, forward to that. Okay, so um, we're gonna continue with the uh, JAG input um, and get us kind of set up on a time frame and a tempo to make sure that we're getting uh, everything in place prior to um, bringing that, um, the, the uh, information back to the board here. Um, but we, one of them is con continue JAG input, establish tribal uh, advisory council um, update the board periodically, uh, and we really want to simplify, simplify the plan. Right now, the plan is hundreds of pages long, right, and it's very cumbersome to, to work through, and we're really hopeful that we can um, weed down uh, this plan where it is a very easy plan to work through, and it is a plan where it's a living document and it's easy to 
um, review and update and, and come up with uh, ways for when, when we see change, we can input that change properly. Um, and then come back to the board for uh, your consideration with that. Okay, so this is kind of the timeline that we're looking. Um, we're going to try to to get a um, a group together to to bid on the the project. You know, we're going to come up with the scope of work uh, in the next coming months. Uh, get that out um, by November, uh, and then work through that uh, process and into uh, February. Uh, um, and come up with a draft plan um, in the spring. Uh, have you know some good um, public outreaches and and community input, um, and then in April to June come back uh, with a draft plan uh, for public review and input, uh, and then late in June through October of, of this next year. Uh, have the final development of the plan and then deliver it back to uh, you folks for your final review in uh, November of 2024. And then just to uh, you know kind of summarize the the overarching uh, goals here of this project is going to be you know very broad stakeholder outreach, uh, you know hold meetings that focus on specific resources such as carbon or fire hazard, uh, specific uses such as recreation or research uh, or you know very open-ended scoping meetings to find out how people use the forest and what they need of the forest uh, we want to hold meetings both locally and also in sacramento to recognize both the local importance of jdsf and the statewide significance of its mission uh, and you know we really want to deliver to you a very simplified user-friendly plan uh, that you know has better utility to both the public and the forest managers uh, that sets very clear goals and priorities for this next decade of management and develops a general roadmap of how we're going to achieve them. Uh, and we want this to be uh, a living document with the core components remaining stable uh, that guides our rational long-term management of the forest resources while preserving the ability to adapt to changing state and community needs over this next decade. Uh, and really, the overarching goal is is for Jackson Demonstration State Forest to you know create and maintain resilient forest land scape rather than focusing on maximizing any single benefit, so we can continue to provide that suite uh, of benefits that California expects of us. And with that, we're happy to answer any questions you have at this point in time. I really <clears throat> appreciate you guys coming in today and providing that that update on all the things you're doing and and uh kind of a roadmap of, of where where you're going and what the what the timeline is this is a top priority issue for management committee and this board and I, this was really valuable to see where you're at so thank you good to see you again too luke yeah. it's been a while yeah. um i'm gonna defer to member forsberg party who's taking the lead on on uh, the jackson issue for the management committee i'm sure she has a few questions and observations just wanted to say thank you so much for the very thorough and excellent presentation on the status of the Jackson Management Plan update and giving a good timeline at the end, I think was really important. My only question is, can I please get the monthly newsletter? Uh, I'd love to I'd love to get that. So thank you very much for just being so thoughtful today in your presentation and would love to open it up to any other board member who has a question. Liz, I, I have a to-do item to get you all on that list. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> I guess just to throw it out for the public too is if you go to the Jackson Demonstration State Forest website at the very bottom, you can sign up for the uh, newsletter. Uh, we'll, we will make sure that we add your name to the list. Thanks, Mike. It looked by your presentation that your intent is to hire a consulting firm to do the management plan or to update the management plan is that correct yeah correct um, you know i think we don't have the capacity with the existing staff right now to to write that in-house and so looking for some outside expertise you know that will work in very close coordination with uh, you know with us and the staff 
at JDSF, you know, we will remain uh, in control of, you know, the, the final product. Uh, but we do need some specialized assistance to yeah i forget that the trouble that you're having in finding a leadership position there yeah okay it's not just the leadership position you know we are down uh, several positions on the jbsf and folks that are working there uh to try to manage a fifty thousand acre course and meet themselves some point you know and uh i really think that going out to a firm will really help us uh, stay on the timeline that we're, we have there and uh, bring some extra expertise on um, other plans that I'm sure that these folks have, have participated in right which is also going to be a, a major positive for us you know and uh, the major inputs that we're going to have with the staff that uh, are working on the JDSF will really help guide this and absolutely the community input uh, that you see at the beginning will also very much help uh, guide us in the right direction. Thank you. I think, you know, this follows on the, uh, the, the 2011 plan was written by a consultant for both uh, uh, Soquel and Jackson. Uh, and we also look at the successful model that uh, Humboldt County and the city of Arcata has, you know, hiring outside consultants to help them with this. So, so we think, you know, there's, there's precedence for this being a, a good model to work for this year. Jay Lopez. Yeah, I had um, a great presentation. Thank you so much. And I know we had a little issue with these slides, but it was one slide where you have a three and you have your points in there. And I thought it was very telling in there the importance of the uh, social aspect of your project and, uh, and, uh, and uh, how you base it, especially uh, those two bottom parts of the outreach and community involvement are key so uh and changing social needs from public uh, forests i thought that it's, we all think about it but we don't discuss it so i'm so glad that you're bringing it up in there great point to have um and and how we use forests and, and what we get out of it is is something that has changed and we need to be on top of that. So I it struck me that slide and how well uh, kind of brings a lot of points in there into what single uh, point of view, but those two bottom part are essential. So thank you for your engagement. And you can see how much work is going on with just that. I mean, it's busy, right? Yeah. And when you really look at uh, the the forest in a whole and, and where we're at, um, it, it takes a lot of moving parts to keep everything moving forward and and really that's another reason why uh an outside consultant and the staff that we have um are working so hard to assure that we're meeting all of these different things you know and uh we're always recruiting uh looking for the right people for right positions on the jdsf so please spread the word that we have jobs and we would love to hire uh, out there. I know uh, you guys are interacting all the time. It's a great place to work and there's a lot of motivated folks there. That's good to know. Any other questions or comments? Member Blake. I appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Um, I th think that like, um, like member, I, I'm sorry, I always refer to <laughs> Lopez. <laughs> um said it's it's a it's really community based it looks like you're doing a lot of work to engage with the community and you know in our respective jobs i always think that you know we think that we're doing like forest environment or in my former job animals but it's really an exercise of learning how to navigate through people and and um and develop relationships. And I think that you're doing a great job doing that. And, um, and I'm excited to see it because as we're trying to protect these, um, these landscapes or just, you know, have them persist into the future, um, it's real relationships, the most important thing. So it's really important to get people out there, getting people involved. And I'm excited about the effort that you've put into that. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, 
public comments or questions on this issue? Go ahead, Eric. Lost, lost track how we do the cards these days. I listen to you folks during the COVID period of, or on the computer all the time. It's uh, been a while since I've been up here. I've also got water. If I start coughing, I'm going to stop. I'll be quick about it. Um, very positive presentation. I've certainly met with Kevin uh, a number of times on, on this issue. I'm Eric Carlson, the Executive Director of Associated uh, California Loggers. And um, I, I feel a certain positivity being expressed here and a certain new vision in terms of where these things are going. And within our own organization, we're kind of pondering what that's going to mean. You know, I was thinking <clears throat> when I heard the uh, uh, presentation earlier by the foresters that one of the things in terms of those massive fires that happened with Caldor and what have you is that one of the more positive elements is that one of our members did work on a fuel break, which was very contributory to uh, uh, preventing that fire from getting over to a lot of the homes in the Tahoe area it would have otherwise reached. So things like that were focused on workforce development, a lot of money trying to uh, get people involved in, in, in what we're going to be calling logging, but it could be harvesting or mastication, what have you. Um, those are priorities to us. And meanwhile, over here at this, I think it's going in the direction it's going, but what we need to reiterate is that back in July of 2021, we had contractors in the woods on Casper 500 and the JDSF. And basically, uh, protesters simply got in front of their equipment, uh, sought a uh, confrontation, CAL FIRE stood down. Uh, we basically were driven out of the woods, and basically it was after a number of our members had worked for 10 years on the previous management plan and approved THPs and people hired to do the work. And, um, you know, one of my concerns is you can go through all of this and what's waiting at the end is simply protesters who, you know, at a certain point in time, change everything and act like history doesn't exist and that we're starting and moving forward in this regard. Apologizing for the cold. Um, I attended one meeting of the, uh, the JAG back in November and found a number of people trying to do some pretty good work. But I also saw a number of people yelling profanities at CAL FIRE representatives there. And I basically said to myself, this isn't a meeting. You know, this is basically community involvement where people basically scream profanities at each other. So that's the message I'd like to bring to you today. And I realize it's a little bit frustrated, but on the other hand, I have a sense that all of these things I've just said don't really particularly exist uh, in terms of the, uh, the record being made on this. We'll continue to get ourselves involved in this. The contractors who worked for 10 years in that previous management plan uh, stepped down from serving on the, uh, the JAG. Uh, we did find another gentleman, very respected in the industry, to move forward and participate. I spoke to him the other day. He said he's been assigned to developing new timber harvest plans uh, for some of this new vision. But again, uh, we've got other things to do. And to the extent this is what's being developed, the question for this forest is what is a demonstration forest? What's our element in it? And to what extent will protesters continue to be a part of the, uh, you know, the element that's not discussed in this venue. I guess I can open up to questions, but it's really just a matter of making that statement and continuing to participate. But I was deeply disappointed when the profanity started breaking out at that meeting. And, uh, you know, much nicer and easier to come here. Thank you. I mean, I, I would just, uh, you know, thank Eric for his, his engagement and, you know, his members engaging us at the local level and recognize that the forest looks much the way it does today because we build a lot of our, you know, restoration, research, recreational improvements into our timber sales. And we ask, you know, the contractors to do much of that work. Much of it is paid for through the deferred uh, revenue that comes from those timber sales. Um, and and so you know just to to recognize that you know we 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 write the plans we design them uh, but then you know we rely upon and invite uh, licensed timber operators to come out and and do the work and so um, I don't think that model is going away and you know again the resources we've been given from the state are one-time funds that doesn't take away our our economic model to you know really show private landowners that you can do this work without you know, removing yourself from the economic incentive of owning and managing a forest, you know, these are very compatible and we'll continue to show that. And uh, I'd like to just add in, um, you, you know, we have strived very hard to have good collaboration at our meetings. And sometimes it does get um, 
I wouldn't say confrontational, but there is definitely some um, good interaction that, uh, and a lot of that interaction does come with um, with emotion. And I think that we're uh, taking steps to clean that up with having a facilitator and really helping us understand each other's points of views and move forward in a positive direction. So uh, I encourage you to come back to a meeting. Uh, the more that we collaborate, the further we're gonna get together. And we all, re we recognize that, we realize it, and we want to assure that that's what's carrying us on in, into the future. So um, I, I do hope your experience the next time you come to the JAG will be a, a, a more pleasant experience. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, both good comments. Cedric? Thank you, Chairman. Um, Cedric Twites here, Pacific Industries. Uh, we, we don't operate on the coast um, too much, some forest land, but, uh, you know, I'd like to share some thoughts with you around how you're going to structure the, the management plan. And I, I think of the climate smart forestry paradigm, which is really a continuum, right? You've got on the one end where you're harvesting uh, forests as fast as you can, growing them as quickly as you can, and then transforming those into long-lived wood products and then storing those wood products in, in a uh, in the built environment and then on the other end it's kind of just walking away and maybe not doing nothingness in terms of a management paradigm but much less intensive um, and there's everything in between and so what I'd appreciate seeing um, from the management plan at, at Jackson Force mainly because the state's footprint around demonstration force is growing and they have the unique capacity to be able to test different hypotheses and so I'd like to see like paired watersheds where um, things are actively managed um, and trying to do along that climate smart forestry paradigm, including uh, rec um, recording things like ecosystem services, where you're looking at the coho productivity in a uh, intensively managed watershed and the coho productivity in a, a just a kind of a preserved watershed and then everything in between, including recreational experiences, spotted owls, um, all the different sort of uh, invertebrates, et cetera, and, uh, and see what sort of uh, values can be discerned from that so that decision makers can, can actively understand what the trade-offs are between alternatives. Because that's what I see a, a failure in a lot of different venues is, Folks don't have a good handle on what what's at stake when I accept this as a as a decision as compared to that, and the public needs to know. And with our burgeoning uh, population, you know those sorts of decisions are going to become more and more critical. So I'd encourage that kind of a an approach uh, in that watershed or in that demonstration force because it's going to be done presumably inland as well, and we could all learn from that. Thank you. Thanks, Cedric. Anyone else? Yes, um, we do have some folks online. Um, first, we have uh, Mr. Ginger. Richard, you are unmuted. Okay. Um, at first, I'd like to uh, uh, thank Luke and Kevin for giving it a best shot that they feel that they can do. And there's a lot of uh, positive there, but uh, there's a couple of problems for the public. Um, one of the foremost is um, what is co-management? Co-management uh, should mean like uh, uh, an equal um, uh, voice between the co-managers. And the, until that happens, I, I don't know if... Uh, that can adequately happen uh, with uh, a consulting firm. There needs to be some kind of a process that that really um, addresses this because, like, uh, it's really nice to hear Bill Kai. I haven't heard Bill Kai for a long time, but um, he talked about uh, to uh, build a consensus in a new paradigm, and I'm, I'm afraid that uh, it, it's going to take more of an effort than what has been described because a lot of what has been described is uh i guess i'd call it nickel and diming doing 
things on a small basis. Of course, I'm a great believer in going from planting watershed to a larger watershed, but uh, there needs to be the whole continuum addressed as, as much as possible. I keep referring back to the uh, science review panel that was uh, that my nurse headed up about answering the question uh, with a MOA from the Resources Agency and NOAA Fisheries about um, are the forest practice rules adequate for um, protecting and recovering listed anonymous fish. There needs to be a similar kind of a high level, really in-depth uh, casting out to uh, determine what are the parameters for a paradigm for forests in the future. And so I, um, uh, I would request that this presentation and the PowerPoint be made available as soon as possible uh, to the public. I think that will be helpful. Um, and uh, we've got a timeline now and supposedly a new management plan will be out by next November. But it, um, use the devils in the details once again. There's there's so much needs to be considered. And there's so many. Um, there's so much residual defense of Jackson, much of which I think is is not uh, conducive to getting a new paradigm, uh, because there's a chance here with this 50,000 acres to really point the way. And you've got a lot of things uh, going on here, many of which are positive and many are not. So uh, I would admonish you to take a bigger take a bigger look with a bigger process, and uh, that's why I've been so disappointed about uh, when Tom Porter, the former director, asked if he put it in the management committee. And the management committee is sort of like it's sort of an afterthought after what uh, Cal Fire uh, works out, uh, and it really would be an important a chance for the public to weigh in. And there needs to be a chance for the public to weigh in in this timeline with a body that really means something um, to all the different um, so-called stakeholders in this. And it, it's it's deep and it's cultural. And I just bring up once again, you know, Priscilla Hunter uh, made comments on uh, uh, um, heritage protection and soda gulch harvest plan uh, last May, I believe. And uh, although Cal Fire has made some point by point, uh, as far as I'm concerned, negative responses to her concerns. It really hasn't been formally, she hasn't gotten a, an actual personal letter responding to her personal letter that was written for the heritage uh, uh, group uh, of the Coyote Valley Pomos. It's just, uh, you know, the whole, it, it's so tied in to the whole perspective uh, of forestry, including cultural, uh, 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 especially, so I would, I would urge for people to make a bigger, broader effort, and it's a resources agency and the Newsom administration really uh, pick up. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Richard. If I could just kind of address, you know, Richard is is correct that uh, you know we don't have a definition for co-management. I don't think there is a single definition that anybody has for co-management at this time. You know, there's some some principles that we look to, and you know, shared responsibilities, shared knowledge, shared decision making uh, is definitely one of them. Um, uh, and I guess I just want to you know kind of point out some of the uh, the the efforts and the progress that we are making on that front and. You know, I think we see it as uh, a chance for us to really develop the relationships with all of our local tribes. Each one is going to have a different, unique need, uh, you know, from the forest. And so, you know, we're doing that individually, uh, but then we're also do, trying to get collectively as a group of, of local tribes to come together in that tribal advisory council. And that was one of the things that's been, uh, you know, maybe holding up us, uh, really kind of launching out on this uh, a review of the management plan because we do want to have that in place you know we have committed to that early engagement you know we've already uh, done some of the information exchange so that we're working from a, a common point of reference of what do we know about the the use past use of of the jackson landscape uh, so not only when we go to them on a on a sequa you know required uh, consultation but you know just for that more open consultation of you know what is it that, that you and your tribe need from this forest you know as far as access natural resources um, uh, you know uh, uh, ceremonial 
you know, we're starting from kind of a, a common place of knowledge of, of how the landscape was used in the past and maybe where we might look to uh, to develop some of those. So, um, you know, I, I think you'll see this uh, play out over time. I don't think this is going to be fast relationship building. I think this is going to be, uh, you know, kind of slow and steady, but we're going to continue uh, along that path to making it a much more culturally rich landscape. One other thing I wanted to add is um, the Mendocino unit is working very hard uh, with Chief Gunn actually uh, reaching out um, very frequently to our local tribal um, councils and um, throughout Mendocino County. And uh, it's been very good to, to get the engagement, but it's been very challenging on them as well because they have a lot of things going on in their daily lives. Uh, and um, it's hard for them to come to some of these meetings and, and different things. So uh, we are doing our due diligence to uh, work with all the tribal members or the, the tribal councils and stuff in um, in Mendocino County. Um, but again, it is a challenge for, for them uh, to be able to meet some of the demands uh, that are, we're asking of them because it does take time to get out uh, and look at projects and do different things, so. You bet. Any other? Yes, we have two, um, we have two folks with their hands raised. Matthew Simmons, uh, you're, uh, uh, you're uh, unmuted. Hello. Yes. Uh, yes. My name is Matt Simmons. I'm a staff attorney at the Environmental Protection Information Center. Uh, I wanna thank CAL FIRE for this presentation. Um, ever since the direction was given, to review the management plan and begin rewriting it. Uh, it's been hard for the public, I think, to know exactly where we were in this process, and I, I appreciate this update. Um, something that I didn't hear anything about was the environmental review process, uh, you know, CEQA and, and looking at the environmental impacts of rewriting this management plan. Uh, and I wanna strongly urge CAL FIRE to do, to complete a full environmental impact report and complete the process of CEQA. I, I know that environmental review has sort of gone out of fashion and that everyone is constantly looking for exemptions or emergencies or reasons not to do it. Um, but when you're talking about writing a document that's going to you know, dictate the management of this forest for the next 10 or more years, um, I think doing a robust environmental review with alternatives analysis and like strong public engagement and, and you know, scoping meetings and public meetings are great, but really allowing the public to comment on and, and give their input into the management plan is incredibly important as well. And so I, I really urge you to, to take a hard look at that. And it'll, I think it, there was another public commenter who talked about the conflict in the forest. I think a large part of the conflict comes from you know, a lack of the public feeling that their voice is heard in management decisions. And so this this review is giving us an opportunity to, to do that and to do it well. And so I urge you to do so. And then since other public commenters gave comment on sort of what they want to see in the management plan, I think I'll just, I'll have a lot more to say about this, but something as someone who's read through the management plan a couple of times now, uh, there's a lot of discretion in the current plan. There's a lot of should, and try to and ought to. Um, and I think that something that this new management plan ought to really consider is having less discretion, you know, more shells, Cal Fire putting some more strict rules on what it can and can't do on the forest. And I'm not saying that, you know, Epic would agree with all those or that the timber industry would, but if we all knew what the rules were in any given case and there was less discretion, I think that would also help reduce conflict in the future. Um, thank you for this opportunity to comment, and I look forward to talking to you about this more in the future. Thank you. And uh, Karen Mackey. Karen, you're unmuted. Hello, um, my name is Karen Mackey, and earlier today we you've talked about um, you've talked about or the Tulare Lake is much larger and Cal Fire has had to do a lot of work to, you know, to help people adjust to that. Um, also, we talked about that the, the Cal Fire needed to fly in hay for um, cattle. And of course, we were always talking about wildfire. And all these things are caused by climate change. 
the way we manage our forests can make climate change worse, or it can can make move things onto a onto a better better path. And I I would really like to see increasing the amount of carbon stored on Jackson as one of the goals, and perfecting methods that will make that happen, and monitoring you know the amount of carbon in the soil, the amount of carbon in the trees, the size of the trees. I was very heartened to see that you removed from your harvest plan, you know, trees that were 48 inches in diameter or larger, but that should really go down lower, you know, maybe 30 inches, and also, being, you know, increasing the amount of carbon in the forest should be an actual goal, not, you know, not just kind of a, keeping a few trees. So that's my, that's my comment. Okay, thank you for that. I think, yeah. yeah, I don't think we have any more comments. Again, really appreciate the presentation, really informative and good discussion and input after that, so thank you. Uh, we are gonna take a break for lunch. We will.